These captions are all over social media. This style first blew up on TikTok, but many creators and brands recycle their content so you can find it and you can post it on TikTok, Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. Before I show you how easily you can add it to your videos and ads, let's first answer the question why it's being used and why you should use it as well. Number one, consumption behavior. Some studies suggest that up to 85% of video consumption is with the sound off. So without the subtitles, all the value you're sharing through sound is lost. Number two, the decreasing attention span on social media. Especially if you're posting educational content or podcasts, the imagery can be very static and boring. These subtitles really give you an opportunity to visualize the points you're making. Okay, now let's dive in into how you can actually add these captions to your videos as easily as possible. First of all, there are five video editing tools I see most people using. Adobe Premiere Pro, CapCut, Final Cut, iMovie, and DaVinci Resolve. Out of these tools, only these three are free or have a free version. The more important difference though, is that only two out of these tools are capable of generating automatic subtitles, which is the real game changer here. Adobe Premiere Pro and CapCut. If you want to learn how to generate them on both of these tools automatically, I will leave a link to a video where I explain it. Don't worry if you don't use these tools. In that video, there are also third-party solutions like Descript or Captions where you can generate them as well. But if you want to do all your cutting, color grading, transitioning and captions all in one tool and as automatically as possible, you will need to use Adobe Premiere Pro. Maybe in the future, even the desktop version of CapCut, but for now, I will show you how to properly style the captions in Premiere Pro. Most people create captions on Premiere and all the other tools manually, so they just listen to the audio and transcribe it whilst they're editing. If you're doing it like that, the text fields will look like this. The automatically created captions are in their own subtitle track. Now you can see that both of these are in the ugly default styling. To change the style of the caption, you just click on it and in the essential graphics panel on your right, the styling menu pops up. On the regular text, there is an extra step. You actually need to click the text in the preview window or on this text in the essential graphics panel to make the styling appear. Now, before you start styling your content, you need to position it properly. And I see so many creators and brands putting the text in places where it is covered by watermarks of the platform. You need to make sure the text is in a position that will not collide with any of the button's text whatsoever. I created this mask that can be laid over your footage to make sure you properly place your text. I'm giving you this template for free. So if you want to use it, you can just download it in my shop. The link is in the description. To position the caption, you go to the essential graphics panel and click on the positioning tab. You can adjust the placement by changing the X and Y value use next to it. Up here you can adjust the font size. Let's go for 100. Make sure you go big on the font. Okay, what I also recommend doing is changing the text to all caps and of course changing the fonts. There are two fonts that are best for this style of caption. The bold font and the one I prefer most, Lexant. Neither of these are default Adobe fonts so you will need to download and install them on your computer. I will leave a link to both of them in the description as well. If you don't want to install an extra font and you just want to use a default font, I would recommend open sans. Okay, now one of the most important parts is the color styling. I always go for white as fill. You can add a stroke in black to make it pop, but I always go for the shadow to increase the contrast. In the shadow styling tab, make it black, 100% opacity, zero distance, and then play around with the size and the blur. I always go for a huge shadow like this because I want the best readability. If you want to highlight specific words or sentences, you can just select it and change the color. Now let's get into the really interesting part here. How do you actually apply the styling on all text and how do you save it for future projects as well? When you're happy with your style, you can go back into the essential graphics panel and under styles, you can create and name a new style. When you go to new text section, you can simply select the style you created and it will automatically change. To make it quicker, you can also click on this arrow that applies this style to all objects on track. Another way of doing it is by selecting all text fields you want in this style and then drag the text style from the project bin onto the sequence. As you can see, the text styling is an asset in the project bin. So if you open a new project, the styling won't be there anymore. So what you will need to do is import the text preset on each project. Lucky for you, I also made this styling a free preset so you can download it from my shop and then just drag and drop it into your project and onto your sequence. If you want to upgrade the captions even more, you can add transitions and make them go from this to this. Now at this point, there's a huge problem. As you can see, when you click on the 
automatically generated captions, there is nothing in the effects panel, so you cannot set any keyframes or animate in any way. When you drag a preset on it, nothing happens. When you drag it on normal text, it works. I really hope this is going to change in the future, but as of today, it's going to require a workaround. Now, if animations are not very important for you, I would recommend just sticking with the automatically generated static text and just let it be. If you do want to take it to the next level, you're going to need to copy and paste all the generated text into normal text fields and then animate them. I would recommend doing this only on videos that are less than a minute long. Okay, now when you're done with the text fields, you can either animate them using keyframes or you can drag and drop presets on them, such as this pop in or this drop in animation. Now you guessed it right, I made presets for them as well, but these ones are not free. I know, I know, but as I said, you don't necessarily need them. But if you do want to use them and want to save a lot of time creating the animations, you can get it for a couple of dollars also in the shop. So check out the link in the description. With the presets applied, if you still want to take it to the next level, you can add emojis like this. But you actually cannot put emojis in the text fields of Premiere Pro. If you want to learn how I do this, check out this video.